In this video, I'm going to share with you how to use Logitech Capture. It's a software that can be used to create online course videos as well as other educational based content. Hey guys, Adam here from Hustle Savvy, helping you grow your audience and build your business around your skills and passion. Logitech Capture is a software by Logitech, obviously. It allows you to adjust your webcam settings and also capture your screen. And that way it's most suitable for creating online course videos as well as other tutorial based or educational based content. This software comes free as part of the package when you buy the Streamcam webcam, the C92 Pro Stream webcam, as well as the Bryo 4K Pro. This might change in the future, so do check out Logitech's website in case there are more cameras being added. But for today's video, I'll be focusing more on the C92 Pro Stream webcam as that is the one that I have with me. It's good value for money in my opinion, and I use this webcam to record my entire course as well as my entire YouTube channel. In fact, there's two YouTube channels now that I've used this webcam. I made a video about this webcam recently. Do check it out as I go through the settings as well as the different quality of images you can get from this webcam. So now I'm going to switch over to Logitech Capture and share with you what I see on the screen and we'll go through each of these settings because there's quite a lot of things to cover in this video. So let's get started. All right, so this is the Logitech Capture software. Before we get started, I wanna make sure that I don't overwrite my settings as I walk you guys through this software. So right here, when I click this button, there's a profile settings and I can actually switch to a different profile. I might even create a new one. And this is one of the most powerful features I feel because it can remember your different webcam settings. So let's call this test. Okay, so to start things off, um, this software can define multiple sources as a video stream. What that means is that I can have my first source here and my second source right here. And as you can see, if you don't have a source selected, it's going to ask you to click on a drop down and select what to display on the second source. So maybe I will display this, which is my actual screen right now. You're gonna have this weird effect here because we are capturing the screen, which is capturing the screen, <laughs> if that makes sense. So let's go back to source one. This is usually where you wanna put your webcam. And I have my C922 Pro Stream here. I can also choose to switch to other webcams if I have them connected and if I'm um, using different USB ports to connect them. But I don't, so it won't show here but it does show me everything else I can use as my screen capture. And that includes even these other things such as uh, the different windows I have opened, whether it's my WhatsApp, my Windows Explorer, my Chrome, and the other software that I have, which is pretty interesting. Let's say we go to the um, Chrome window so it's going to show the Chrome window uh, right here. And this is what is going to be recorded if you choose to record it by clicking this button. Now to illustrate the difference between recording your entire screen, which is what you're seeing right here, I can actually record the particular window. So if I click down source to choose another source rather than capturing the entire uh, display, which is my entire screen, I'm going to capture just this window. So I'm going to choose this Logitech Chrome window. And then this is what the people would see when you actually record the video. Right now, it's going to only focus on this tab uh, on Chrome. So that might be useful. Sometimes you want to record your entire screen to show multiple windows. Other times you just want uh, a more focused approach. So you just want to focus on a particular software or a particular window that you have open. The next thing you'll notice is that if I were to switch tabs, this will update as well. 
and it's now showing me what's being displayed in that tab because again it's displaying what the software is so the software that I'm using right now is a web browser it's Chrome and it's showing what Chrome is showing so it does reflect whatever tab that is being displayed in my previous video I shared the Logitech camera setting software, which is a separate, more lightweight software that's also free, which you can use to adjust your zooming in or zooming out. And you can even change some of the color contrast, brightness, etc. So you will find the same settings right here. And you can zoom and zoom out as you can see here. That's too close. <laughs> but yeah, you can choose to pen left, right, top, down, and you can also reset if you're afraid that things have been too weird and you screwed up. Next, you have autofocus. Now, this one determines what to focus on, and it does a pretty decent job to stay on focus on the subject matter that's important, which is right now, for this video format, it's me. It's a talking head format where I am talking and I'm the main subject, and right now, that is what the camera should be focusing on. If I were to disable this, I can manually control the blurriness, so to speak. And at which point would the camera be focusing on? So the lens will adjust accordingly. So let's say we bump it all the way up here. It's gonna be super duper blur because it's zooming in too much. So. So you can play around with this to have a little bit of a blur in the background and leave it there and the settings will be saved because remember we have profile settings here and whatever is under the test account will always be there the next time you fire up the software which is really convenient because that way you can imagine if you're recording like 50 videos in one shot or 20 videos, um, some sort of marathon that you're doing because you are doing an online course and you want to record one video after another. When you're batch recording like that, this kind of settings are very convenient because that way you just have to set it up once and you're good to go. And all you have to do is focus on your content. Speaking of which, it'll also remember the other settings like white balance, which is the color temperature of your video. So if you want to go for a cool, or the colder look, you go all the way to the left. If not, you can go for something a bit warmer by moving it to the right, or you can go somewhere in between. You can also leave it on auto, they'll figure it out. Image settings will give you very similar settings to Logitech camera settings. So you can adjust brightness, Ooh, too bright. Contrast, sharpness, uh, and also, well, this one is sharpness. <laughs> and if you screw it up again, you can just reset. And the anti-flicker, it try to keep between 50 or 60 hertz. Um, there's a description here to explain what it means. Chroma key is a setting to determine which color is your so-called um, green screen. So is it a green screen or is it a blue screen? If you have one set up behind you, that way once you set up the exact color to key out, as they call it, it will remove that green screen background and make it transparent in your video software. And that way you can then replace something in your background. You can put a flat image or a video playing in your background, which is what streamers used to uh, are used to doing. It's, it's assuming that you need that. You might even have this for your online course in case you want to show something as a backboard or rather a blackboard and you have some notes at the back or some key points. I don't use it, but it's there if you need it. Moving on, we have the overlay section, which is this one icon right here. And the first thing you can remove is actually the watermark, which is Logitech or Logi at the bottom right. And we can just turn it off to remove that if you don't want that there. And then text overlay is something important and interesting for you to try out because you can literally change the message that's being displayed on screen as you go. So I can type in test. 
and you can put the duration here whether it's just two seconds or forever which is the default pretty cool because that way you can imagine if you want to give a lesson or you're doing a live stream or broadcast and maybe you want to put the message of the day or the theme of the day you can shout out by putting the message here so something like that and what you can do is also change the settings the font styles you know the color you can manually key in the key code or the color code for that uh, particular color that you're looking for you can change the font and also the font size you know what i'm going to change this to subscribe to my channel <laughs> just for fun there's also scene effects, which is basically filters, as it says right here. So it'll have some predefined filters. Uh, you'll need to define which source you want to uh, apply this filter. So source one, which is the one right here. This is a monochrome black and white style of a filter. If I select this one, this is more blue, very cold kind of filter. I don't know what this is, but <laughs> you can see that there are results as you select the filters and determine the source. And you can play around with other settings like borders and all that. You can also ha have transitions. So whenever I switch, they will have a particular effect between this source and the other source. So let's say you have another source um, that's showing PowerPoint slides and one source that's showing your webcam when you toggle between the two as you're recording or as you're broadcasting this live it will have that transition so that's what it means so i'm assuming that you're watching this video because you want to create online courses let me know in the comment section below what is your main challenges or what's your main struggle with that let's discuss before you start recording, there are a few settings you should consider. Number one, very important setting is the resolution. Usually for me, I would recommend full HD, which is uh, 1080p rather than the 720p that is um, by default. The advantage of going 720p is that you can have a higher frame rate. So you see there are more options coming up here up to maximum of 60 frames per second. So if you're not familiar, FPS or frames per second is how many images are being displayed to a particular person as the video is playing. So the more frames they have, the higher the number, the more smooth the video would look. Um, but for the purpose of educational content and online courses, I would usually just keep it to full HD and 30 frames per second. Um, that's my format. If you are doing something at 24 or 25 frames per second, make sure that you align yourself with all the other video sources and make sure they're all the same. If not, you're going to have some weird effects, might be some stutter, might be some um, jagged edges, stuff like that. Encoder, I just leave it as it is and make sure you have your file locations determined already and you can change that by clicking this button, making sure that you have a folder that's dedicated to just all your raw footage and maybe you want to separate that from your edited footage to make things more organized. All right, now that you've sorted your video options, let's look at your audio settings which is this button right here. And there'll be a drop down menu to determine which audio source that you want to use as you're recording your videos. So make sure you select the right one. I have a few options here. You might have a few microphones set up. So make sure you choose the right one that you're using for your online course recordings. And that way you ensure that the quality is there and the right kind of experience is there. So. If this is too much for you, I went through a lot of different settings and different controls and toggles. You could also try something a bit more simple, which is Loom. I made a video covering how to set up Loom and how to record and save your footage, exporting it out. Link for that will be appearing right here, right now. 
and also in the description below. So do check that out if you want a simpler solution. Now that we have all our settings all sorted out, we can start recording our online course videos. There are a few circles here that define uh, different types of squares and layouts. What it means is you can toggle between source number one and source number two, like so. Since source number one is my webcam, source number two is my screen. So it will record my screen or will display my screen. I can do a combination of it. So I can see myself, the webcam at the bottom left. And also um, number two is the screen at the back. I can reposition this if I want, which is pretty cool. So that, you know, you might want to have some slides here. You maybe align your slides or the content of your slides to the left. This will make some room and you can put your image of your webcam somewhere else. You can even have this kind of configuration and feel free to explore yourself. But these are presets done for you. So it's pretty quick for you to toggle between the two. I would recommend just playing around a few of them because you don't need the rest. And that way they remember your setting as well. So it remembers that I put this at the bottom right. So when it toggles back, it will be there, which is very handy. And it's based on your profile. So if you switch profiles, it will then follow those settings on that profile as well. Another cool feature is that the obvious stop, start recording and stop recording is here, but there's also this camera icon. So if you click this, there'll be a countdown timer and then it'll take a photo. So it acts like a camera that just takes still images. And I've used this in the past to create a bunch of my YouTube thumbnail photos. Now, there's also the last few sections here, which is, this is where all your files are stored. You can click here and a folder will show up of all your recordings and all of your photos. So next to it will be the audio controls. So as you can see, as I'm talking, it's changing the indicator to show the level of the volume or the noise. You can also mute it. You can adjust the volume. And the other one is the audio volume for your speakers. So that's all the important settings that you can have set up before you start recording and you're good to go. One last thing though, you can also switch to dark theme, which is a bonus. Some of you probably are hardcore fans of this particular theme color, not just for this app, but also any other software out there. So it's also included. Check out this video right here if you want to learn more about the Logitech C922 camera. And this video right here if you want to learn more about how to be more confident on camera. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.